Hello and welcome to the 2021 Berry Garden Show. Now, we've been privileged enough to be entering these gardens. We're going to go and visit eight gardens that would rival anything in the country, if not the world. So sit back and relax, grab a cup of tea or coffee, a glass of wine. Best thing about it is you're not going to get sore feet and you're not going to get lost, but I'll probably do both of those things. Enjoy. David, your garden is, what, nearly 45 years old? Yeah, about that. <laughs> That's not bad for someone that looks 50. <laughs> oh, <thanks>. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your garden. Uh, well, we bought the house, there was some big trees on it, and that was it. And um, this driveway you see here, uh, bricks came from the West Picture Theatre in Nara. They dumped a big truckload on the block next door, and I'd clean a few every afternoon after school. When I first started, I insisted we just have natives and of course my wife wanted other things and then gradually we've changed over and got a bit of everything. One of the hardest places to jazz up is a dark, damp spot that never gets sun. And one of the plants that shines in that spot is these guys, the oyster plant. I can't remember its botanical name. But right around this time of year, they put on these beautiful show of flowers. Really good plant for a hard spot in the garden. And how good do the burgundies contrast the greens in the garden? These weeping maples. Um, you buy something sort of a metre tall and a metre wide, cost you a couple of hundred bucks, but it's a great investment because they spill out, don't prune them, give them plenty of space, and then they just layer over and they layer over and they layer over. They're nice and light and they move in the breeze, giving you a bit of movement in the garden. So in a town garden, one of the things you can do to make your place look bigger is blur the boundaries. Or you can cheat and make your place look bigger by putting mirrors in. And if it's not reflecting straight back on you, you think it's another part of the garden. And if it is reflecting straight back on you, you just think there's another good looking rooster in the place. I think every person in the area has probably got an open fire and firewood stacked up somewhere. But when it's done like that, it's more of an installation or an artwork. It's very cute. When you're planting your garden or thinking about how to design it, you need to think about where the sun is and what's happening in your garden. Now, I love the fact that this ornamental grapes here, it softens the edge of the carport, makes it look more like a pergola or an entertaining area but it also gives you a little bit more shade. So at four o'clock in the afternoon, I don't have the sun in my eyes where I'm standing now because the grape's coming down. Admittedly, if you had a four-wheel drive, it'd need to be a bit higher, but you get a sedan in here, no worries. As far as maintenance goes, when it drops its leaves, you just cut it back to the single leader that's going around on the wire, and then it'll just reshoot like this. So when you cut it back, you get the sun in winter, and when it grows like this, you get the shade in summer. What's your number one favourite thing in this garden? Oh, we get a lot of birds come in because we've got a chook that walks around and I've got to feed the chook in the open because it's a free range chook. So all the birds come down, all the lorikeets and the, a few corellas and the top knot pigeons and a few other birds. And yeah, we sit down there and the cat just sits on the chair and watches them. <laughs> Cats live the good life. Oh, it is, yeah. I think the best thing about your garden is that it's a blend of exotics and natives and you've got beautiful roses, so it's sort of feminine and then you've got what you call the forest, which is robust and you don't have to do much maintenance in there. And it's a mishmash, yeah. but then you've got some beautiful delicate maples and these oyster plants are showing off at the moment. Yeah. Oh, well, thanks for inviting us into your garden. We really appreciate it. And I'm sure the people watching are gonna get a kick out of it. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, no, it's, been, it's been good fun, yeah. So 
and how long have you lived here for? Uh, this is our fourth year. Yeah. Uh, we came in July 2017, uh, 2018. From Sydney? From Lovett Bay, Pitwater. You know, I, when I left my house at Lovett Bay, um, we were there for almost 20 years, and I thought this is my spiritual home. I love it. I love watching water come in, come out. I loved it. And I thought, I've got to leave here because it's too hard. I'm getting older, it's too hard. I, we found this place and before my foot touched the ground, getting out of the car over there, I knew this was it. This was the place I was going to buy. I hadn't even seen the house. Just the feel of it. What I love about here is the, the contrast, the looking around and, you know, there must be a hundred different shades of green here. I love that. I love the silence, the birds, the... Um, lack of people I'm, and Barry's eight minutes away, you know, it's perfect. Now in a rural property, chances are you're not connected to the mains when it comes to water, so you've got to store it and they're usually between sort of 15 and 25,000 litres of water picking it up off the roof and that's actually what we're standing on here. This is a great big water tank. I wouldn't be surprised if it was three metres deep, made out of concrete and pretty ugly. Well, this one has been modified to look like a fantastic little courtyard. This garden was created by the former owners over 30 years. Um, they did an extraordinary job, but the woman in particular, Wendy, it's her, it's her creation. So I started um, with what I thought was a magnificent garden. And then I started to look closer and see that it needed some work. And it, we've really put a lot into it. Both Richard and I have put a lot into it. But it rewards you in a way that's quite extraordinary. So Robin spoke about her meditation garden. Now as an Aussie bloke, I'd just say this is a great spot to come and relax. What's the use of having a garden if you don't have a favorite spot where you can actually sit down, collect your thoughts, whether it be about what you've got to do that day or what you're going to tackle in the next year? Or just sit back and relax and see all your hard work and, and what you've achieved. Now the dam's not full at the moment, they're working on that. But when that is water and you've got layers of hedges and then the paddocks in the background and established trees, a nice cool spot with your best mate. Taking in your, the moment, your thoughts. Every garden should have a spot like this. But I've actually got to eat a little bit of humble pie because this driveway is lined with she oaks. Probably one of my least favourite trees. The reason why they're common name she oak is because if you're quiet for a second, you can hear that shh when the breeze goes through them. And when I drove in here straight away, I had a feeling of calmness and that this was a garden of interest because I can't imagine anyone planting these unless they had no money. It's worked really well. What do you like most about living in Berry? I love the people. I, I love the, the closeness, the awareness of the environment, the, the um, people care about each other. Do you know there's always someone there, always someone there. Oh, yeah. I love the landscape, I think it's glorious. Firstly, thanks for opening your doors to us and the camera so we can show the greater public and get, you know, get more people to visit. As far as time goes, what are you hoping that happens in the next few years for the garden then? Like, what's your plans? Do you want to fill the garden beds out with more perennials or what is it that you want to do? Probably let it settle a bit. We've, we've done a lot. Even this lawn behind us is just recovering from adding in the big wall and all the machinery. What was that, 13 months ago? And always an idea to add in another garden bed like that perennial flowering one there. And I think, I think we're probably going to slow down a bit. Now wouldn't you be happy just with this area as your backyard? But then when you put that view and the dam and park-like gardens around it, this garden is spectacular. This is the modern extension to the garden. It's only been here for 13 months. Beautiful lap pool, nice and narrow, cuts down on evaporation. A generation ago, you get the pool as long as you could and as wide as you could. Well, now it's all about length and not so much about width. I'm talking about swimming pools. 
It makes it very usable and lots of people can be in there, but it's actually narrow, so there's less evaporation when it comes to looking after your water. Now this lawn we're walking on, it's called Sir Grange. It's a new lawn, really fine leafed, low maintenance, doesn't need a lot of fertiliser or water once it's established. It's spectacular to walk on, I just want to take my shoes off. Now this is a work in progress, but it's going to be spectacular in the next couple of years. You've got this beautiful avenue of all your fruit trees. On one side, predominantly citrus. On the other side, you've got plums and apples, peaches, pomegranates, and a few avocados that haven't found their feet yet. And then rather than having to mow in between them all, they've become the veggie gardens or where the strawberries are planted. A few nets to keep the birds away, but other than that, when this grows, and you can see the canopy coming up like this. I think it'll be one of the most spectacular things in the garden. So looking at it now, what can you take from it? Well, the inspiration. The plants are about four to five metres apart, so there's plenty of room for them to grow without touching each other. But you've got this beautiful vista at the moment to the wood pile and the tractor, but I'm sure they could change that with a sculpture in a couple of years' time. Now, you invite guests here and there's cabins, so you've got sort of gardens around their houses, which are kind of like individual gardens, so to speak. How would you describe it to someone who was thinking about visiting Barry and staying here? Eclectic. We've got, well, it's called Rainforest Lodge, so that one's, it's dark, it's, it's my favourite in summer, because it's, it's cool. It's got rainforest plants all around it, and you go around the corner and it's like an English country garden. Roses and hydrangea, uh, you have axis hedge around it, all deciduous trees. Then you go to the next one, it's got, I don't know, it's probably a bit more Queenslandy palm trees. And, mm. So Glenn, this is your oasis. Can you tell us a little bit about your garden? This property was a cow paddock in 1994 when I bought it. It was a new subdivision of three lots. Uh, I built the holiday home in the cottage in 1995 and we started the process then. So it's been a, uh, a long process. We were, um, our background was backyard gardens. We didn't have any experience in, in acreage. So um, it was, it was a we, we were weekend warrior. We were both working full time, my wife and I. So we, um, we, were weekend warriors, we would plant and, uh, and the process evolved. So uh, it's uh, been a growing thing. One of the advantages of having acreage is you can have different style gardens within the garden, but they'll be far enough apart from each other that they complement each other. So this area here is very tropical. There's quarter lines, yuccas, lots of palms, succulents, the chorus border along the edge here, some bromeliads and lyrio. It's lush and it's green and it's a bit of a jungle. Now that contrasts to the roses and other formal parts of the garden, but when you stand back and look at the whole thing, it's just 50 shades of green, so they all complement each other. You can do whatever you want. Well, this is very grand and over scale, a big set of stairs. Coming into would be the size of a good backyard. Now, the plan is here to create a room. The frangipanis are only young. They're probably cuttings that have been put into the garden in the last few years. But when they get up and they're above our heads and they screen that area off, you've got the formal stairs, the beautiful fountain, the jasmine climbing up the pillars of the building. This is a special garden. It just needs a little bit of time to mature. I love the whole garden, there's so many gardens I love. We've got, because it develops slowly, I love the cabana, I love, I love the ficus, because the ficus, this waxy leaf trees grow very well here. I've had, over the years I've had trees such as um, evergreen trees stripped yep. by the wind here, the yep. very harsh wind here. We've got our own little microclimate now. I like the aspect, I love this north aspect. Um, I do like the climate here, I love the south coast. I think the south coast has got a great climate. It's, uh, 
gets cold, but it can be nice. You get the four seasons, so you get contrast, so you appreciate all four seasons. Exactly, that's right. So it's, uh... Especially in big gardens, but every garden should have a destination. Now, I know this is Glenn's favourite spot. He was talking about the cabana. I've come in, I'm out of the wind. I've got the biggest and best view of the property looking down towards the dam. The ficus is going to grow up. It could get up to 20, 30 metres wide. I grew up with one of them at North Sydney Oval, so I've got very fond memories of a ficus tree that stretches out and kids climbing all over it. They're a ton of fun and they're a beautiful tree. Oh, bonjour, madame. Bonjour, monsieur. You think I could be in the south of France, and that's the only French I know. How beautiful is this entranceway? You've got the stonework, which has been done by a master craftsman. The conifers are up, giving you these grand pillars of green. But I just like the simplicity of this garden bed. As far as maintenance goes, you wouldn't have to do much at all. Agaves, you can pretty much find them in the council throw out, but when they're big and they're perfect, I still think they're one of the most architectural plants you can find. How cute's this? The jasmine's spilling down and hiding the little cottage, but it makes you stop and smell the flowers. And that'd be one of the reasons you'd come to Berry for the weekend, so you could stop and smell the flowers. Ah, jasmine, love you. Glenn spoke about wanting to create rooms in the garden. Well, this is pretty much a typical courtyard if you were living in the city. You've got three walls backing onto the house, a great big London plane tree above you. It feels so beautiful and cool in here on a warm summer's day. This would be the spot you'd find me with the newspaper and a drink in my hand. And I think the dog's pretty happy too. 2015 we were invited into the garden festival. Mary gave me a call and said, can you, uh, made you. She's very persuasive. She's very persuasive and very charming obviously and uh, very likeable and um, so we agreed so it was a, a frantic year. We had a year to get ready. It included the trip to Thailand. I bought all this bronze ware and statues and yes. massive bird baths and um, so we've uh, we got it all together for 2016. If I had to sit down and write the elements of a quintessential Berry town home, it would be this little worker's cottage. Weatherboard, tin roof, and a garden that's as pretty as a picture. You walk up to an understated set of stairs, but then next to them you've got these beautiful grand buxus balls and urns, and hedges just following mulch paths. Now Sarah's built this garden on her own, so as far as landscaping and technical things, they're not here, so you don't miss them because this is just such a beautiful cottage garden that everywhere you look, the plants are the stars, and when they're put together in a sense of scale and contrast of foliage, they work beautifully well, and they just make this house look like it is the most amazing renovated cottage in all of Berry. So Sarah, Tell me about your garden. Yeah, well, you're in the heart of it. Um, this is Poppy's Patch, named after my beautiful beagle. Um, this is the very first section that I worked on. When I moved in, this was a driveway, and that was just a weedy patch of lawn. So I knew I wanted to grow my own food. Um, so this is this is where it all started, and this is this is my true love here. I love the ornamental part as well. I love my roses and my hellebores and buxus hedging, um, but this is it for me, yep. Sarah obviously has a flair for design. This veggie garden is one of the prettiest and yet one of the most simple ones I've ever seen. It's the mulch on the floor, maintenance free. You can drop a weed that you've pulled out of the garden bed onto it and it's not going to look messy because it's naturally messy. If that was concrete or pavers, if it was lawn, you'd have to come in here and mow. But just mulch, it means it's fine. You've got the composting factory over here with the chickens. They're turning the soil over, doing their ones and twos. 
laying eggs, which is going to be great for breakfast. And then you've got all this produce. I've never seen it look so good and be so practical. This garden shouldn't be hidden by the hedge because it's so pretty, but the fact that it is hidden by the hedge means it's a destination. And having destinations in your garden is a clever tip for design. Now this backyard is not your typical backyard. There is not a square metre of lawn to be seen. It is all garden and just this one path. Now you call this the parterre garden, very formal, bordered in buxus, coming in matching to the circle around the fountain with some beautiful roses in it. And as Sarah said, she loves the fragrance of the big beautiful roses. That is a massive flower. Lots of flowering Pyrenees, these beautiful contrast of the purple of this and the greens above it and the citrus sitting in this sort of ornamental garden makes sense. I can't hear any traffic or anyone talking because all I can hear is the soothing sound of the forward water features. And being more than one means I'm not drawn to the one point. It's around me because there's four of them in the backyard. I think, I think your house could be the cover of every sort of country style magazine you, you think of from, you know, it looks effortless, but like yeah. the gate you've yeah. got there or the rusty tin, you know, the using the old timber. So you've obviously got a flair for it. So you, it's right when you say it's artistic. Absolutely, and you know, it's got to, it's got to be functional as well. You know, it, it has to produce, it can't just look good. Um, but yeah, it is important for me for it to look, look good as well. How would you describe your garden to someone who is blind, for instance? Oh, well, I would say it's pretty and productive. Um, so there's, you know, a huge macadamia nut tree. There's, there's a couple of big standard citrus um, in the ornamental part of the garden. Uh, but yeah, it's, 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 it's formal, it has good strong bones, but hopefully what's within it is, um, uh, yeah, just beautiful, love it. We moved here because it was an acre and we wanted to be close to town. But we sit out there in our outside area and we honestly feel there's no neighbours because of the canopies hiding all the other houses. And it's just like living in a park really. Jen, what a beautiful garden you've got. Tell us about tell us about your garden. Well we've been here about six years. The bones was were always here and Everyone says, oh, Jen, it's such a lot of work, and I can truly say it's not a lot of work. I don't come out in the garden for months on end. Once it's established, um, I keep the weeds down with sugarcane mulch, and really, it's just a matter of pottering sort of garden. One of the plants that makes this garden easier for Jen to look after is this little border of balls. Now it's called Nandina Moonbane. Well, this one has a much finer leaf and a ball shape. These probably have never been pruned and yet they're all uniform in size. So that's a huge low maintenance issue. And they change color in the cold weather and you get beautiful shades of oranges, reds and yellows, and then lime green new growth. So if you want low maintenance, but a plant that pops, look for these little Nandina moonscapes. From the street, this looks like your typical suburban house. It's only about 15, 16 metres wide. You can see the house in the driveway. But when you walk through the garden and you end up with this as your destination, you realise that it's much, much more. The trees are beautiful canopy and um, I get that thinned out, which I did just recently. And really, it's a fantastic, beautiful garden and we just love it. Tell us about the bathtub. Well, the bathtub, there used to be nothing there and a friend of ours, I said I wanted something there and he said, I found one on Gumtree for you. And I thought, oh okay, so he went to Sydney and came and I said, that's too good. 
I, uh, I nearly was going to use it inside the house. Anyway, we put it there and um, yeah, the red, big red geranium, which looks fantastic when it's all in. This is a bit of a folly, a bit of fun in the garden. It doesn't need to be here, it doesn't serve any purpose, except for drawing your eye and putting a smile on your face. The old bathtub they picked up on Gumtree, when they saw how good it was, it was nearly used inside the house rather than the garden, but these red petunias really pop against the white. If you want something to really stand out in your garden, plant it white. If you want it hidden, plant it back. Now the pergola's doing its job, it's shrunken in size and the jasmine's getting up, but sitting on their patio and admiring this just breaks up the 50 shades of green behind it, which makes you appreciate them even more. What would be your favourite thing about this garden? Where's your go-to spot? Is it sitting here when you're on the phone or is it, you know, when, when you've done a couple of hours gardening and you want to sit down? We We're, sit here actually, yeah. we do. And this is cement, these are stone. Um, these are our tiles from our kitchen, <laughs> put in. And it's just great. And everyone, when the garden show was on actually, everyone came and just sat here. On a hot day, there's nothing like it under these trees. Oh, well, thanks for having us in your garden. Thank you. That wasn't too hard, was it? You're still going. <laughs> <laughs>
and some tensioned wire. But I guarantee every person that's my age or older would look at this and remember seeing one of these in someone's backyard when they were a child and getting in trouble for swinging on it. So if you have to have one, have one that's good looking, like this. Most people put their gardens hugging the boundaries of their fence and maybe wrapping around the house. And when you've got an acre, it's pretty easy to have lots of lawn in between the two. But this garden bed here really comes out from the house, a good 15 metres, and it's an irregular shape. And it really draws your eye and gives you depth in this garden. Again, making it look bigger than what it is. And all the colour here stands out because you've got very neutral colours in the palette of the house. I think this is a very clever garden. It looks like it's just been evolving over the years and added to, and that's the difference between a landscape garden and a home garden. And I think all the gardens we've seen have been by homeowners who just love something and add to it every year. And that's what makes a house a home and a landscape a beautiful garden. So firstly, we've filmed all of this over the course of two days where we've had pretty good weather. And we've come to one of our last gardens up on the mountain. And as you can see, it feels like we're in a completely different environment. Stephen, your garden is amazing. And like you said to me when we're driving up here, you actually like to see it when the mist's around because yeah. you get a feeling. It's one of my favorite times actually. And it happened, but it's mainly a summer thing. It's not so much a winter thing. Because it's summer, we get the mist coming up the mountain or they sort of come down the mountain. And you just get, they swirl in. And at night, time, at night time, you take the dogs out and you can't see anything because the, the light just becomes a block. But it, it uh, has this wonderful quality. And the live birds come into the garden and wreak havoc at that point. So, um, but they're, they're pretty amazing. Tell us about your garden. How long have you had it? And uh, what does it mean to you? We, we bought 13 years ago. Um, for the first half, we were weekend warriors, so we'd rush down and do our thing and rush home again. And as I was closing down my practice, um, I slowly spent more time down here. So the last five, six years, I've been full time. But um, it been, you know, I've always had gardening in my life. What we were looking for was a garden that had established trees, and this was tick that box. It had good soils, so it ticked that box. It rains, so it ticks that box. It had a house that we'd do something with. So we, it, was, it was the perfect site for us. And it, but since then, I've learned a lot. In a way, I'd like to start again because I could have, would have done things differently from the start. One of the nicest things about this garden is the different zones have different feelings to it. Now, inside this pool area, it is void of green. But what that means is you've got these clean lines. It kind of looks like it should be in California or somewhere like that. It should be hot and dry. But everywhere you look is a contrast and exactly opposite. With the mist now, the pool kind of looks a bit dreary. But on a hot summer's day, this would look amazing. I love the level changes which were put in out of necessity because the tanks are underneath there. But if this was one big flat deck, it would look like one big flat deck. Now it looks like you've got an entertaining zone where the four-piece jazz band can set up. And when you're in here, because there's no plants, it doesn't mean you're missing out because you've got views back towards this garden and what seems like a fenceless wall around two sides. But the walls are actually sunk in, they're still pool safe, they're just at a different height than the pool. Clever by design. I think there's something beautiful about working gardens. It can be, you know, this is an essential thing to keep the possums and wallabies away from the rosemary and the parsley. But when it's all eclectic and together, it looks absolutely beautiful. And then you punch in some flowers 
like the poppies which are doing spectacular this year, a bit of rosemary, even an artichoke which I don't think will end up on the table, it's grown for its beautiful rosettes that come out of the middle. You've got something that's practical because you can get a feed from it, something that's beautiful. And I bet you this is Stephen's happy place when he's working through here, pulling things out and turning the occasional weed. Tell us about the, the garden club and the, and the garden show. Um, I was, uh, I'm a relatively newbie to the garden club, so about six years. But the garden festival has been going for about 32 years. Uh, well, the last two years obviously have been a problem. Um, and it started off as just a showcase in a country town and barriers changed over that time, so it's more of a country city place now. But it's also developed into a fundraising thing. So we've raised over $800,000 for charities, local charities, over the 30 years, which is quite amazing really for a small event. So we try and get eight gardens a year. Um, it's getting more difficult as, as the population changes, but we, hopefully we'll keep on going and doing that, doing that. But that's, that's not our raison d'etre, so to speak. It's really the Garden Club is about community, coming together once a month, having a talk from someone. Um, there's a couple of events during the year where people get together. We're going to have the AGM in a few weeks' time. It's so important for a community like Berry, and I've said before, I came here not I came here for the rolling green hills and the beautiful soil and the perfect rainfall and the wonderful climate. And then once I got here, the community spirit and the um, openness and, and willing to invite you in uh, outweighed all of that and, and we've got to hold on to that because the more people that come and the new people that come, they're all welcome but we've got to sort of show them why they're welcome. Yeah and it's also like at the Garden Club itself, there's an older core group and there's a younger group and so you've got to mix them together to make the community and there is a nice community. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah.